Welcome to the MOOC's course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's class is Introduction of Unit Operations. Before going into the details of today's lecture, what we do? We have a kind of recapitulation of what we have seen in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, what we have seen? We have seen a few statistics of Indian chemical industry and then with respect to the different types of chemical plants, the availability of raw materials, energy and then transport facilities are very much essential in general. So then what we have seen? We have seen raw material picture for India, energy picture for India and then transportation picture for India that those things we have seen. In addition what we have seen? We have also seen how a chemical plant may be grouped as a kind of combination of different types of unit operations and unit processes and at the end of the class what we have seen? We have seen different types of unit processes which are very common in many of the uh, chemical plants that is what we have seen right. Now in today's lecture what we see? We see unit operations. So before going into the details of unit operations we once again see how a chemical plant may be subclass classified as a different groups of different types of unit operations and unit processes. Right? So let us say what we can have, we can have a reactor in a chemical plant in general because most of the chemical plants there are reactions occurring, in fact almost all. There may be some plants, chemical plants there may not be any reaction, there may be only separation, purification and drying kind of thing, they are very small minor plants. But in general common plant we may be having reactor, right? it is an equipment. What type of reactor it is, let us not worry about it. In this reactor section, there may be a reaction taking place. Let us say reaction taking place between two components A and B and then from this reaction, after the reaction occurring at a given temperature, pressure and then catalyst if at all required or non-catalytic whatever, right? reaction has occurred and then you may be having products like C, D, E something like that and out of which only C is the main product by products C and E and then there may be unreacted A and there may be unreacted B as well, right. So this is what in general in any common reaction that is we can uh, generalize it, okay. So now a reaction further may be reversible, irreversible, uh, those details we are not going in that can be any kind of reaction, let us say generalized one this one. So now this reactant A and this reactant B may not be available in a very pure form in general. They may be available in a very crude form from the natural resources uh, that we have, right. So then there may be a, a requirement that these raw materials has to be purified to get required A level. What is level of reactant? That, that should be suitable for a reaction to undergo. Something like you know combustion, coal combustion as I explained previously. Coal may be available in big lumps, but such big lumps we cannot be processed in fluid as bed combustion reactors so that the combustion can be done and then you know energy can be produced and all that. So that is what we have seen. But now that before getting that final sizes of the coal, we have to undergo several processes, right? So some of these processes that we have seen, like you know, crushing, that is size reduction kind of thing and then a washing of the mud and other kind of ingredients etc. Then uh, drying, then separation, let us say in the raw material you may not be having only A, there may be other things also there. Same may be, same or similar kind of operations may be required to get a purified B which is suitable to undergo reaction with a purified A, right. So you know there may be n number of kind of things, right. So after the reaction let us say the product purification also we may need to do because we understand that not only the main product D other than that one C and D in byproducts are there and there are some kind of unreactants A and B are there, right. So then what we have to do? You have to purify separation by separation or other kind of purification technology something like you know distillation, evaporation depends on the reaction type and then product that we have, then absorption, these kind of several types of uh, uh, you know centrifugation like that n number of operations need to be carried out. That is what we uh, have seen in the previous lecture. So now all these things whatever are there prior to the reaction all these steps or all these steps represent some kind of physical or mechanical changes only. 
there are no chemical changes at all in this process. Similarly, here also after the reaction product purification or separation of reactants A and B and then getting back and then this A and B uh, probably you may be getting back to the reactor so that to enhance the reactivity or increase the yield etc. Right? So, these things again may need some kind of uh, these operations shown in the right hand side here in the box. So, here again all these things are physical uh, changes only, physical or mechanical changes only occurring. There are no reactions at all. There are no reactions at all in either of these uh, circled things. There may be driving force like delta T, delta P, delta C, etc. That is a different issue, but there is no reaction at all here. So, except this reaction step, whatever the rest of the things are occurring in the plant, all of them which are physical or mechanical changes only, we call them unit operations. Right? So, now sometimes you know in the reactor not only the unit process which is some kind of reaction, not only some kind of reaction, um, but also some kind of physical changes may also occur. So, then that means this unit operations whatever we are going to discuss, they may occur individually or simultaneously uh, in parallel or along with the reactions or unit processes, right. Their main purpose is that you know cleaning, purifying, etc. so that to make the reactant suitable for the required reaction to undergo. Then also it is what is the other thing of this unit operations you know the separation purification of products etc those kind of things. So, where all these changes whatever physical or mechanical changes are occurring all of them have been done by one or other kind of unit operations. So, now what I mean to uh, mention here that I was mentioning different types of activities or changes physical or mechanical changes that may take place in different types of unit operations that is what I am trying to mention here. The same thing we are going to see here again. Okay? So, in chemical plants unit operations describe a physical and or mechanical procedure or change occurring individually or parallel to chemical reactions or unit processes and then more than two third of chemical plants occupied by unit operations and connecting pipes etc. So, just now I have explained there is only one reactor, but there are a number of uh, different types of uh, unit operations involved and they are being connected in different manners depending on the chemical plant and all that. Okay? So, from that itself what we can understand that we can understand that majority of the chemical plant is occupied by this unit operations and then connecting pipes etc. So, what are the primary roles of unit operations that we have already seen if we list them they are physical steps of preparing reactants. Reactants may not be in pure form that we get from the uh, natural resources. So, then we have to prepare them suitable uh, to reaction to occur. Okay? So, separating and purifying of products, then recycling of unconverted reactants and controlling energy transfer into or out of the reactor as per the requirement of the reaction. Okay? So, these are the primary roles and then there may be few other uh, things also, but this is how we can put them in a kind of grouped manner what are the primary roles. So, these are the primary roles of unit operations. Then another good thing about this unit operations are that their concepts apply to variety of manufacturing procedures without any change in the concept. Let us say you have concept of uh, grinding, you have a concept of distillation, you have a, a concept of evaporation let us say. Different types of concepts are available or separation etc. Separation by gravity or uh, you know uh, or by centrifugation etc. These kind of different possibilities are there. So, you are going to see some of them in today's lecture as a basic information, but in detail you see in different courses. I will be mentioning against the each unit operations in which course are you going to study in detail about those things anyway. So, let us say the, their concepts they are same, only thing that as per the operating conditions and then physical properties of the solids liquids that are involved in the process, only changes occurring because of the changes in these uh, physical properties of uh, material involved or operating conditions etc. only. Otherwise, concepts are uh, exactly same. So, concepts are not changing uh, from one plant to the other plant if you go as long as the unit operation is remaining the same. So, that means principles of uh, distillation are going to be same whether are you considering it uh, in a petroleum industry or polymer industry or whatever.
only thing that depending on what component you are fractionating in different uh, diffractionations by distillation that makes difference and then size of the reactor may be different and then operating conditions may be different but the principles are going to be the same that is the good thing about uh, this unit operations right we can apply them without any changes in the concept but simply changing the operating conditions as per requirement for example principles of absorption distillation extraction drying etc does not change from one plant to the other so some more details about unit operations if you see both upstream and downstream processes include a variety of unit operations just now we have seen prior to the unit processes whatever the uh, unit operations are occurring we call them upstream processes upstream processes there are uh, having n different types of unit operations and then after the reaction whatever the purification separation etc recycling etc are there so we call them downstream uh, unit operations right so they may be having n different types of operations in the under each category there may be some cases where uh, a given a particular unit operation may be useful both in upstream and downstream let us say drying drying of raw materials may be required in the uh, upstream process and then drying of the products may also required in the downstream process as well so right and then more than two third of the chemical plants are occupied by unit operations and pipelines some of the unit operations are important both in upstream and downstream sections as i mentioned for example drying right uh, for example separation size separation or separation by centrifugation or separation by uh, gravity field etc are found to be important in both uh, upstream and then downstream sections of many of the chemical plants upstream processes which are nothing but uh, pre processing of raw materials some examples crushing grinding washing filtration drying mixing etc downstream processes that is post processing of products like distillation evaporation extraction settling granulation centrifugation etc and then some of these uh, downstream processes like distillation evaporation etc they are also known as uh, stage operations what does it mean by stage operation stage operation in the sense there may be different stages or you may need to calculate how many different stages are required right so for a given process how many plates are needed for a given operation etc those calculations you in general do in your mass transfer course right so where you'll be discussing about uh, studying about uh, distillation evaporation etc so because of them uh, because of such reason they are also known as the stage operations but not all unit operations are stage operations only few of them are stage operation like you know distillation evaporation absorption etc now what is the point of understanding or you know trying to study uh, this unit operations unit processes is important to understand why because you now when we go into the details of uh, uh, production of uh, uh, given inorganic chemical in the due course from second week onwards what we may be having we may be uh, seeing several types of uh, sections like absorption of some gases may be take, uh, taking place right drying of some products may be taking place fractionation of uh, some components purification of some components may be taking place so there we may be using different types of unit operations and labeling them in the flow sheet accordingly so it is essential to understand them right understanding all these unit operations is not possible in one single course anyway right so why because this unit operations are so many that we cannot cover in one single course let us say you have a, a mechanical unit operation course where you see most of the solid solid operations and solid fluid operations where separation or purification etc uh, may be done by different types of uh, unit operations though there you can see whereas several types of stage operation like distillation etc that you can uh, understand in uh, you know mass transfer courses and there may also be uh, some kind of purification or something like that in by using the heat exchanger so uh, such kind of things you may be studying in detail in heat transfer course etc like that so there are several courses dedicated to study in detail about each of them so however since this course chemical technology is in general offered in the fourth semester of uh, ug curriculum and by that time you may not have gone through majority of these courses it is essential to know a few details about uh, such unit operations right so in the previous lecture unit processes we have anyway discussed now we are going to see a, a few common unit operations of the uh, chemical plants which are very common 
right. What we are going to see under this particular heading of some common unit operations, we are going to list a few common unit operations and then uh, schematically see how they look like. They are not true engineering design pictures, but you know they are just a simple schematic representation so that to have a feel about that and then in addition to that we are going to see some of their applications. Okay? So, these operations are often grouped in uh, different categories like you know solid solid operations, solid fluid operations and then solid fluid separations etc. like these categories are there. So, accordingly we are going to see them one by one. Size reduction and size enlargement. Again now this size reduction, size enlargement is a very common terminology in mechanical unit operation. In fact, this half of the syllabus of uh, mechanical unit operation course is uh, dealing with different types of size reduction and size enlargement equipment, right. So, this size reduction equipments in general you know divided as coarse reduction, medium or intermediate reduction and then fine reduction, right. Coarse reduction like you know you have big big equipment where you do the crushing crushers etc. like you know you have big lumps of uh, resources that you get naturally. So, they may be sizing in uh, 50 mm or 50 centimeters also possible even bigger also possible. Such bigger uh, lumps you cannot use in the reactor. So, then they have to be uh, reduced to the smaller size like few mm or sometimes even few microns also. So, coarse reduction is the one where few centimeters like 50 centimeters, 100 centimeters uh, big size particles or lumps are there you reduce them into uh, 1 centimeter or few mm something like that, right? right. That is what known as the coarse reduction that is done by the crushing. Then medium reduction where you do the grinding. So, that few mm or uh, one, or 1 centimeter or 2 centimeter size particles may be reduced to uh, much smaller like you know uh, fractions of mm or some micron size something like that. Then fine reduction where you know attrition or uh, uh, rubbing kind of actions taken place so that uh, the feed size is in general fraction of mm and then you get some uh, microns or you know uh, nanometer size also possible in general by the size reduction. So, since you based on the size of the feed and then product these things are the common terminology coarse reduction, medium reduction and then uh, fine reduction kind of thing. There is another thing is that uh, you know cutting or sizing. Uh, if you want exact size, exact size of the uh, material then let us say you want like 1 mm cubical shape something like that. So, then exactly if you wanted to do then cutting kind of thing uh, reduction equipments are also there, right. So, now the coarse reduction you have the crushers and then medium uh, reduction there are equipments like a uh, grinders and then for fine reduction you have equipments like uh, ultra fine grinders etc. And then for cutting, cutting knives etc. are there. So, these kind of different types of equipments are there. So, all these things we cannot uh, go through here as I mentioned you know this size reduction and enlargement comprises half of the mechanical unit operation courses where you are going to uh, see or where you might have already seen probably their working principles etc equipments used applications, advantage, disadvantage, etc. all those things you might have gone through or you may be seeing when you do this mechanical unit operations course. So, like that under each category there are several details. So, I will be giving some of the details uh, up which are required to understand at this level or uh, you know to understand this particular course, okay. Crushing, let us say it is a jaw crusher type. It is one of the equipment uh, representation of one of the uh, coarse reduction equipment we call it jaw crusher where there are two jaws are there one is fixed another one is moving right. So, let us say here it is fixed it can be other way also not necessary only this one has to be fixed and then this one has to be moved it is other way also and then this is moving and then this uh, moves in this direction in one particular direction like this right. right? So, then what happens? 
the bigger lumps which are uh, 50 centimeters or uh, sometimes even bigger uh, lumps you know they are dropped here in between and then while these are moving so then this material will be trapped in between and then because of the compression that material experiencing between these two jars that will be reduced and then smaller particles be produced right. So, Usually uh, use typical in 4 is to 1 size reduction of hard materials from minus 5 to minus 20 mesh or minus 1 to minus 4 mesh. Okay? This size reduction 4 is to 1 that represent the ratio between uh, feed size to the product size. Right? So, that is what and then what this minus 5, minus 1, minus 4 etc. and then what is this mesh? There are standard terminology in this one also. Let us say uh, we have a mesh something like this, you know, mesh in the sense that in general saving mesh etc. That, that you see at your home in general in your kitchen. So, something you visualize. So, then that certain kind of sieves let us say if you have like this. In industrially we may have different types of sieves as well that you are going to see in your mechanical unit operation course. But now this is how you have taken. Now, let us say uh, you take uh, one particular uh, section. Let us say I am taking this particular section here, right. So, the linear dimension of that section is I am drawing the linear dimension of that particular section is 1 inch. I have taken such a way and then I am counting how many openings are there in that 1 linear inch dimension of the sleeves. So, if there are 10 are there. 10 such kind of openings are there, it is known as a uh, 10 mesh or mesh number 10. Okay? The number that uh, are written here is nothing but how many openings are there per linear inch space of the you know um, in the screens or mesh. Okay? So, that is what it is. How to get this one? So, let us say now let us say for 10 inch, if you wanted to know opening, opening of this now, there are 10 openings in 1 linear inch dis distance, there are 10 openings are there, right. So, how to know how much is each opening size? So, that is 1 by 10 inch minus thickness of the wire that has been used to construct uh, this particular mesh. So, that you get opening size opening. Right. This is all you are going to see in your uh, mechanical unit operation course anyway. Now, then what is mean by minus 5 and then plus 10 or something like that. Okay. So, now what you understand here, what you understand? If the number is smaller, the size of the bigger, the size of the opening would be bigger obviously, right? because it is a reciprocal of this number minus less thickness of the wire. If the number is bigger then that means it is a smaller opening. So, minus 5 plus 10 that means it has passed through bigger opening of 5 mesh uh, screen and then plus 10 that means the material that has passed through this one and but that is retained on the 10 mesh. It is not able to pass through the 10 mesh size. So, that uh, you can have uh, several screens one after other and then at the top you are having the uh, biggest opening uh, screen and then gradually uh, you arrange the different screens or different mesh numbers. So, that the gradually the uh, screen opening decreasing and then bottom most may be having the finest opening one. right? So, that you know you e under each fraction, under each compartment you get the particles of different sizes that is the size separation is required. Right. So, as per your reaction whichever size material is required that fraction you can take and then remaining one accordingly you process whether further re uh, size reduction may be there and then sometimes you know by this crushing there may be uh, oversizes are there very fines are there which are not suitable. So, then you can take them to the size enlargement section and then make a bigger size particles etc. if required otherwise you can discard them. Right. So, this is what by means the, these meshes etc. So, all these things are also you are going to learn in your uh, mechanical unit operations course. Since these numbers appearing here, so then I explained here for your knowledge. Right. The grinding is next level size reduction equipment. As I mentioned, crushing is a one kind of operation which is used for the coarse reduction. Grinding is a kind of one operation where 
intermediate or medium size reduction has to be done. So, here wet or dry grinding may be carried out in presence of balls, pebbles or uh, rods. So, something like that this schematic represent but uh, represent of the operation only. You know that they are known as the mills different types of mills. Now, this is known as the ball mill. This also you are going to see in mechanical unit operation course. So, here heavier balls of different sizes let us say these are the balls they are different size these you know these filled ones right filled with this color. Now, they are bigger balls metal balls or you know wooden balls uh, different size of heavier balls heavier compared to the nature of the particles you know material that you wanted to crush. Let us say these particles whatever you are uh, getting from this uh, jaw crusher may not be uh, suitable for reaction uh, even now after undergoing this uh, coarse reduction. You need further finer particles. So, then this product you can you may take into certain kind of mills, ball mills, haber mills etcetera different types of mills are there. So, you put them in uh, ball, these balls are nothing like a kind of a uh, cylindrical container. The feet material which you wanted to uh, you know further reduce that one along with the balls you put them and then you rotate them these balls are rotating like this when they are rotating this material moves up and then fall down. So, uh, when all the material moves up and fall down you know the uh, heavier uh, balls may be falling into the material which you wanted to uh, reduce the size further. So, they fall on those particles those particle will further reduce in size in their sizes. Okay. So, this is uh, typical uh, this is what happens there are again the principles and then uh, rotation speed etcetera all those things not part of the course. Now, here feed may be minus 4 to minus 100 mesh size and then reduction ratio may be 10 to 15 to 1. Okay. Reduction ratio is nothing but the it is uh, uh, feed size divided by the product size product size is obviously the smaller one compared to the feed size. Okay. Pelletizing, pelletizing is a size enlargement equipment, uh, size enlargement process right. So, there are different types of operations uh, are there for the size enlargement, we are seeing one of them here. So, usually they are used to make tablets from powders of medicinals and catalysts etcetera. So, here you take the material whichever you wanted to uh, pelletize, these may be very fine particles from these mills also that are crushing and grinding in ultra fine grinding you may be having very very fine particles and then you cannot throw let us say because if they are having some important value like catalyst etc. So, then what you do you can pelletize them if they are pharmaceutical value then also you cannot throw them. So, then what you do you can pelletize them. So, pelletizing or tabulating is very common in the pharmaceutical industry because the tablets etc. whatever you take they have been uh, tabletized or pelletized by using this size enlargement equipments. Okay. Next is solids handling, pneumatic conveying, bucket elevators, screw conveyors, belt conveyors etc. Uh, comes under this picture. So, these things also you may find in mechanical unit operation course much details. In the pneumatic conveying what happened? There is usually used for uh, grains however, now also used widely for cement, catalyst, coke and powder, chemicals etc. What happens in this one? Let us say you have a solids fine solids etc or grains etc you are having in a silo these kind of containers that we use for storing the solids are known as the silos or hoppers etc they are also different designs are there so we'll see later them uh, you can see them in uh, different courses so now here this material you take them in a silo and then uh, there is a opening here this opening when you open the material comes to the pipeline and then from that pipeline you need to elevate them or take to the some higher levels or different positions. So, what you have to do? You have to uh, provide the pressurized air, air or some kind of gas which is not reacting with the material. So, then these things will be elevated or taken to the next level wherever they want it to be taken. Right. These are also important let us say you have a uh, gas solid reaction and then solids you need to feed continuously. So, then there you may have such kind of situations. Bucket elevators, so they are used for elevating materials in general. So, what we have? So, now this section is actually rotating right. So, there are some kind of bells are there. So, now these locations 
buckets are connected actually different types of buckets different size buckets are in general you know uh, connected so now when they are rotating the material here feed material that comes so when the bucket is located this section so that you know comes here that feed material i'm calling feed because it's not feed or you know product is not always with respect to the reaction in this uh, course especially when it is about uh, unit operations so bigger size or you know material that you wanted to take from one level to the other level so that you take here so this bucket moves here and then like that all the buckets comes here and then when they comes here they can be transported to the different levels right so these bucket elevators are very common in uh, majority of the cement industries etc and then uh, coke processing units etc can be used for moving powdered or granular materials to and from storage or between reaction vessels in general next is another type of conveyor so screw conveyors screw conveyors are very versatile and used to mix and heat or cool in general so here what we have we have a section under which inside that one there is a screw actually right the screw rotates in a different direction right one particular direction in this screw what we have we have a screw that rotates in one particular direction so now the material that you wanted to transport from one level to the other level that you can take it here right and then when this screw moves this material is taken to this level and then from here to this level like this it continuously moves as the screw moves forward and then material will be discharged to the other side the similar way we can do the so called you know drying or uh, cooling or heating or cooling of the material can also be done now in such case the material and then screws would be at different temperatures so uh, some kind of screw conveyors look like this as well as shown here so can be operated under pressure also useful for powders and sticky materials let us say silos or hoppers that have shown in the previous slide you know if you have such kind of silos and then you wanted to store powder very sticky material or very fine material and then uh, use the pneumatic transport for the conveying that is not possible because the sticky or very fine material does not comfortably come through the silos so easily and then their further conveying may not be possible by pneumatic conveying right so under such conditions if you have this screw conveyors it will be very easy to move such kind of a very fine or sticky materials belt conveyor can be used to handle large volumes over long distances economically this belt conveyors are very common in coal industries rather coal industries coal mining especially if you are doing underground mining of coal then you know deep into the earth several uh, meters sometimes kilometers also you may be digging in and then th there you may be finding the coal and then this digging is not done in a horizontally completely or completely vertical they are digging at a certain angles etc so then material that has been found that has to be transported through uh, usually they are often transported through this uh, belt conveyors okay but there are also applications in other industries also most right wherever the solid handling is required in any chemical plant so such so these screw conveyors belt conveyors etc are very common now whatever the material that feed that you wanted to transport so that you take here and then this belt rotates in this direction so then when the material comes here uh, right and then as the belt moves that material is transported to the other side of the uh, belt okay so this is another way of belt conveyor where you have the material stored uh, in big silos or hoppers right and then uh, that material if you wanted to convey to the uh, reacting vessel or some other uh, unit operation so then what you have at the bottom you have the belts uh, something like that and then these belts are moving to those directions so whenever you want material you open this solid uh, storage equipment like silos or hoppers and then that material flows onto the uh, belt and then moment that uh, material comes because this belt is moving so the material will also be moved to the next level and then usually these are used near horizontal conditions most of the belts are fabric or rubber kind of uh, materials next solid solid operations such kind of unit operations also be studied in detail in mechanical unit operations course however few details we see here screening 
screening as I mentioned you know, you know they are wire plastic or fabric screens often they are uh, used to separate solids of varying sizes. So, let us say one particular screen of uh, bigger size is arranged in this direction right. So, then material that you wanted to separate in varying size so that you pour it here feed material. Now, whatever the material uh, that is passed through the opening of this mesh right. So, that means the material that is having size smaller than the opening of this uh, mesh that will pass through and then will be falling onto the may be collected as a one kind of fraction and then which is not able to pass through or the material which is uh, having size bigger than the opening of this mesh that will be taken or you know move downwards like this and then the next screen would be having opening which is smaller than the previous uh, uh, screen which is above of this one right. Like that n number of screens are available or arranged and then different uh, uh, sizes based on the different sizes you can have different fractions. You can arrange them in as a kind of stacks in vertical manner and different possibilities are there. Now, illutration it is used to remove fines from a solid by passage of a gas to fluidize and transport the fines. So, what happens for uh, simple representation what you have? You have a mixture of uh, solids which are including uh, intermediate and then very fine particles let us say. You take them into a container like this right and then pass them like this and then from the bottom of this one you allow a gas to flow upward. So, whichever particle lighters the darker ones are the lighter particles they will be fluidized and then taken as a separated from as a different leg from the top whereas, the whichever are the particles are you know uh, bigger on or which may not be fluidized because of this uh, incoming gas velocity they will be collected as a different uh, fraction from here like this ok. Next is froth flotation. In this operation finely grounded ores are suspended in water using flotation reagents and blown with air. So, that whatever the fine lighter uh, material ores etcetera are there they are suspended at the top along with the froth whereas, the heavier mud dirt etcetera are there which are heavier they will be settling at the bottom of the flotation cell and then discarded as a tailings ok. So, these ores are often uh, having size minus 5 mesh desired product collects in froth like this let us say you have uh, the finely ground whatever the mixture ores and then mud etcetera are there that all you bring here into the flotation cell and then you add some amount of flotation reagents then you aerate it using a gas so that uh, more these uh, bubbles and then more amount of uh, froth forms and then this froth what will do that will carry the particles the fine ores whatever are there they will be attached to this froth and then they will be lifted and then they will uh, form as a top layer at the top along with the froth. So, then this fines along with the froth are collected from the top as product whereas, the mud dirt etcetera which are heavier which are not being attached to the froths they will be settled at the bottom as a tailing or the material to discard different uh, representations are there for this froth rotations etcetera also. So, one other uh, representation is given here. So, what we have? We have a container you are sending the feed material continuously and then you are adding you know flotation reagents and then you are aerating using a uh, rotating uh, provision provided here. Now, the froth is forming right. So, in this one and to that froth the fine purified or uh, washed ores would be attached whereas, the mud etcetera would be remaining at the bottom as tailings. Jigging is one of the oldest processes. It is used for separation of heavy minerals from lighter gangs. Also used for separating coal from uh, heavier contaminants in general, but nowadays this is not used very much in many majority of the chemical plants because of the advanced methods have come into the chemical plants. Then magnetic separations to remove tramp iron from feed to subsequent grinding and pulverizing steps. So, this is one example to concentrate magnetic iron ores is the another one. What happens let us say whatever the material after the crushing or the coarse reduction let us say big lumps you have 
pass it through a jaw crusher so that you did coarse reduction right after that you have a material of few mm size right now that material may be having not only the desired uh, material but there may also be some metals or something like that may be there right the same material again you take to the grinders to grind to get the intermediate uh, reduction followed by the fine reduction what will happen so if there are metal particles etc are there you know they may be damaging the grinding equipment they may be damaging the ultra fine grinding equipment so sometimes it is necessary to remove such kind of metals from the uh, mixture of raw materials mud etc so you need to do such kind of separation sometimes sometimes what happens that metal particles themselves which are having certain kind of magnetic properties they themselves may be important uh, material so before taking them uh, further or washing them and all that what you can do you can allow them to pass through this magnetic separation unit so that you know metallic uh, component they may be attached to this uh, magnetic portion and then non metallic material whatever are there they can be separated out so either way it is important to do sometimes this magnetic separations then mixing agitation is one of the type of uh, mixing which is used for the liquid liquid or solid liquid mixing in single or multiple compartments for example here you have a agitation equipment where different uh, uh, multiple compartments are there where these materials are coming and being agitated or mixed and then uniform or properly mixed uh, material is taken out from this end okay this may be single unit or there may be multiple compartments it is widely used in process industries then solids blending it divides and recombines a granular mass over and over again to affect uniformity sometimes you know you need to have a kind of a uniformity of the material before taking the material to the next level right so here what you have you have a solids blending uh, so where you can uh, pour this material here through one end right and then this blending equipment is such that you can rotate in particular direction so when you are rotating these things the material will mix up and then once you feel that you know uh, enough uh, uniformity has brought in so you can open from the other side and then collect the material next drying of solids different type of dryers are there uh, spray dryers rotary dryers and then tunnel dryers etc spray dryers suitable for large capacity operation on liquid feed to give powdered spherical free flowing product let us say you have a material coming down here and then that you wanted to dry it or you make it a free flowing uh, spherical in nature in general then what you can uh, do you can allow them to pass from the top and then from uh, bottom in a opposite direction you allow uh, the gases of uh, at different temperatures and then pass through that so that you know this heating etc may take place if required so that the drying may take place right or if you wanted only spherical free flowing kind of product so then that can also be taken test that depend temperature difference etc or all depends on the applications right and then uh, whatever the powdered material spherical free flowing product is there that you can collect from the bottom for production of pigments detergents synthetic resins miscellaneous inorganic salts such kind of spray dryers are often used then rotary dryer they are suitable for drying free flowing granular solids for solids which do not dust or stick and then high temperature uh, versions are kilns for calcining cement lime etc they are very common in organic chemical industries so pictorial representation is given here then tunnel dryers applicable to drying pastes or powders in trays used to dry pottery lumber leather etc in sheet or shaped forms so some uh, pictorial representation is given here the so details you may be studying in your uh, mechanical unit operation course then evaporation evaporation is a very common process uh, for majority of uh, chemical production units where you know some of the uh, volatile component may be evaporated right so for such reasons we may need to go evaporation which is more economical compared to the other kind of process sometimes what happens you know the same operation can be done by different uh, unit operations but it is better to choose a kind of one which is uh, you know economically better one so open pan and multiple effect evaporators are very common in chemical plants open pan evaporators 
Such designs are very easy to clean, often used for evaporating viscous materials in small batches. And then it is a simple kind of equipment that you can see a container where you have a liquid, viscous liquid etc. whichever uh, you wanted to do the evaporation of the material. So then feed you can take it and it is rotating and it is at different temperatures. Delta T is provided here so that evaporation can take place. Whatever the viscous material after evaporation uh, has been done that can be collected as a, a product. The same can be done economically much better way if you use multiple effective operators used to achieve maximum heat economy in evaporation of a paper mill, a black liquor, sugar syrups and solutions of inorganic chemicals. Paper mill and then sugar syrups etc., sugar industry etc. is the one where a lot of evaporation process need to be done. Paper mills you will be surprised to see that paper production when we study. So, from the pulp we prepare a pulp and then from that pulp we will making a paper, right? different uh, size and then thickness etc. In that process what you will be realized to see that that pulp is more than 90 percent is water. So, evaporation of the such amount of water etc. is not going to be uh, easy and then if you are not doing efficiently uh, using the chemical engineering principle, so then it is not going to be economic. right? So, one of such kind of uh, provision to have a heat economy in evaporation is by making multiple effect evaporators like this. Let us say that material whatever you wanted to evaporate, so that is taken here through this feed and then heat is supplied here. right? Some amount of evaporation is taken place and then that material is taken to the next level here. Whatever the heat that is uh, taken away from this one, so that will be fed as a kind of feed inlet heating uh, provision to the next level. Like that it is done in different uh, stages, so then that is known as the multiple effective operators and finally you may have a desired you know material which is having less amount or no amount of moisture or water etc. Next is fluid handling. Different types of fluid handling equipments or pumps are available. Some of them are uh, centrifugal pump, reciprocating pump or compressors, jet ejectors etc. Centrifugal pumps simple in construction and maintenance mostly used for liquids of all types where centrifugation principles are used to transport the fluid from one level to the other level. Reciprocating pumps used for higher pressure delivery also may be used for uh, metering or proportioning. A pictorial representation is shown here. Jet ejectors steam often used as motive fluid used for low pressure operation or production of vacuum pictorially shown here in jet ejectors. Okay. This is about a few of uh, common unit operations. In the next class we are going to see a few more uh, unit operations which are very common in chemical plants. Okay. The references for this particular lecture are provided here. However, most of them you can find in this particular book Outlines of Chemical Technology by Dryden. Thank you.